blessings in the love and in the light of our infinite creator and welcome my brothers and sisters to the law of one conscious channeling of ll research today's discussion i wish to speak about communication i thought about titling this video talking However, the other half of listening, however, the other half of listening as an outer gift is not precisely talking. It is talking with an open heart. Those of QO say, whatever the interactions between any two entities, the sweetness within the stream of moment-by-moment -moment living is dependent greatly upon the self's ability to open the heart, both to the giving and to the receiving of information, communications, and shared emotions, such as affection, love, and appreciation. It may seem, indeed, that some things never need to be said. Yet, if there is a kindly opinion, a good thought, or that which occurs in the impulse of the moment, which seems fair and loving to be shared, let that be shared. For when the breath is expended in speech concerning the desire, to love, to understand, to support, and to strengthen another, that energy is as the healing, the healing that moves between the words, between the lines, between the thoughts, conceptions, and intellectualizations of the rational mind. Language, indeed, could be well dispensed with were it not for the need to communicate for that which most deeply uncovers and cleanses the self is most often not the rational logical or common sense but rather that speech or action which is intuited by that portion of the self which dreams and receives information from the subconscious. For that portion of the self which is visible is but the tip of a very large iceberg, which is completely submerged beneath the surface of that water's edge, which is the alignment of the deeper mind, or subconscious mind, if you will. There is a particular energy which creates certain combinations of feeling which are fairly recognizable to help to inform the seeker as to when he or she has accessed this well of true emotions, that is, emotions which have undergone refining and purification. Trust that feeling which says... This feels right, and do not overstretch the rational mind's burden with requests that all be irrationally seen or logically arranged. For often that which is the saving and healing key within one's impulse is that which cannot be explained except by the feeling that there is indeed such a thing as intuition and that this facility can be honed. Communication, then, is not simply giving clear speech to a listener and sharing information in a way that a listener can understand. It is also responding to that which is heard, both in the words and between the lines of what the speaker has said, with an attitude of open-hearted love and naive faith 
that thoughts can be most helpfully shared. This level of communication is not easy. It is both an art and a spiritual practice. As with the development of all outer gifts, it is necessary before setting the goal of developing the gift on the outer plane to do the inner work that brings the self more and more into an awareness of the full self. We do not become perfected ever. Ask any saint and he will tell us. The more ethically fastatious we become and the higher our vibratory level, the more clearly we will see our many faults. But we, on the path of awakening, must finally capitulate and fall in love with our error-prone, biased, ordinary selves. That is what it takes to begin to communicate with transparency and clarity with ourselves and others in a way that is seen as a help and the sharing of a real gift. We start talking before we open our mouths. The first thing we communicate is our basic vibratory complex. Your inherent vibratory expression communicates more deeply, more searchingly than you shall ever know, than you shall ever be aware of. For the truth, as it becomes purer, is that which we are. And that is far beyond words. When we are working upon knowing ourselves, we may feel that we are being too selfish. Nevertheless, doing this work is absolutely necessary in order to communicate. Our self-confidence and gladness of heart frees both speaker and listener to feel free to share. If we are not feeling radiant, our first work before any communication is attempted is to balance our attitude and find the way back to our own open heart. The art of communication is enhanced substantially by this conscientious clearing up through the Green Ray Center. The clearing of the heart and its opening is exceedingly important and usually much of a seeker's time is continually spent in keeping this heart energy flowing and radiant. The work turns then from the obvious radiant to a more tightly focused radiance in the development of communication skills which are based upon a certain depth of personality or depth of a point of view that is in the Blu-ray Center. The chakra clearing may well extend right through the indigo ray, for communication can involve the gateway to intelligent infinity in the seeker whose depth of personhood has moved into the adept circle. That depth of personality is hard won by most of us, and it tends to manifest as a humility the humility of one who knows from experience that communication can fail badly, as in all aspects of the positively oriented path, pride has no place, and it is a waste of time for us to be proud of communicating well. We can be grateful for this gift, and glad when we do well, but inevitably, there will come the time when we fail utterly, 
while doing everything as well as we can. When these failures come, embrace them and do not be swayed. Just be ready to try again. If an entity has the humility and the patience to work with another entity to achieve clear communication, nothing will keep that entity from achieving clear communication. But it is to the humble only that this becomes true. To humility, I would also add patience. Since when a communication is disrupted through misunderstanding, often the issues involved cannot be remedied in any short time. Sometimes there will need to be silence between two sensitive people while imbalances are adjusted within each person. Another very tricky thing about communication is that it so centrally uses words. Slithery as pieces of okra, the best of them, words are a poor substitute for concept. But it is the best we humans can do within the veil. Shunned of our ability to receive concept communication from mind to mind. Those who are very good communicators often have this intuitive and subconscious ability at their conscious command to a degree and it enhances their chances of using the clumsy symbols that words are. Even the most intelligent and dedicated communicator uses words which have more or less power for the self, but not the same power for the other self. Consequently, Communication on a logical, conscious level is almost bound to be often extremely difficult. Never impossible. That matches my experience of communication over decades of a wide correspondence. We can get better at it. But we never get good enough not to error in hearing or saying. It is a wonderful challenge to me to find the most positive, honest, and kind way of responding to a request for information, opinion, or counsel. I believe in the sharing of concerns as a healing practice. As those of QO say, if there is an experience which is difficult, in that disease or fear of any kind is brought into the conscious mind, the sharing of this concern with another is that which begins the healing process, in that the energies expressing themselves as difficulty have an easier movement through the being when they are freely discussed and shared with another. Thus, the entity with the difficulty is assured at the most basic of levels that it is acceptable to another and that another cares for it and is willing to share with it in the difficulty. This goes back to the self-confidence that allows one to open the heart and let the native love stream through. The truly opened heart often appears childlike because it is blindingly honest, speaking that which it thinks without judgment in an attempt to understand the self as well as other selves. In this configuration, the communication is at its most effective given that there are those which can accept and communicate in return while hearing those 
blunt truths that may not be as pleasant as the euthanisms, rationalizations, and cliches that surround most timid and tentative communication. Communication at its best is an interwining and melting together of the mundane, the emotional, and the philosophical, the many levels of thing and thought, and two personalities being shared back and forth in the kind of liquid made by two minds relating. It is subjective, this melding. What entities are doing when they attempt to speak the truth to each other is relating themselves to the other through the area of concern or question. The actual truth these entities communicate is in part the truth of themselves and only in part the truth about which the words are speaking. This is how central a part personality and relationship play in the business of seeking to speak truly. Sometimes we are asked to give someone our opinion and we know that it really matters to the asker. When we are asked then the clarity of our communication is in being sure the heart is open and finding the most positive way to say the truth. Let our truth shine without reservation. There are times to be confrontive and surgical and blunt and honest because the entity you wish to serve has got to know your point of view. Do not do this unless it is asked of you, but when it is asked of you, in a compassionate way, express yourself in clear communication, in brilliant Blu-ray. It is central to clear communication that we wait to be asked before blazing forth. It is the work of some patience to come to that place where you are willing to wait until you are asked in order to attempt to be of service. This sounds very simple, but is very difficult when you feel that you have something to say that will help another. When this feeling hits, there is the urge to share, and we do not say that this is wrong. We simply say that it may not be service to others. For what entities desire, they shall ask for. And it is when that other entity asks that that precious gift of service may then be shared. The art of listening through to the end substantially affects communication. Many people are caught by the temptation of listening just until they have heard something that catches their immediate response, then wanting to share that response. This creates a situation where one person is talking but the other is looking for a chance to re-enter the conversation to share that response, instead of continuing to listen. Part of developing the gift of clear communication with others is in hearing them out. Realize this can be frustrating if we have something to share, but we don't always have to say the things we have to share. It's not always the important thing to the conversation. The rest of that speech we think we already understand may take another turn entirely. 
we will do better to continue to listen to the end. If you become aware of a situation in which your words are not being heard, then it is that you may ask yourself whether you wish to be heard or whether you wish to allow the other self to express that which that self wishes to express and assume a role of simply listening. In many instances, uh, the appropriate response, we would say, metaphysically speaking, is simply to abandon the desire to be heard and become a sounding board that can hear what another self is attempting to say. This yielding up of the inner agenda and the thing to say is a mark of spiritual maturity. It is an action very difficult to complete. For there is within each self a deep well of desire to be heard, to be heard by the self, and to be heard by those other selves which have meaning for the self. And yet many times, the straightest, and shortest distance to clear communication is to become silent, to release the desire to be heard, and to accept, temporarily, a role of purely listening. Again and again, we will find silence to be an extraordinarily graceful resource that enhances communication. And if that silence is to heal, it greatly needs the balm of forgiveness of the self, of the other self, of the blockage between, of the pain of failing. Again and again, we must flee to the heart and seek to rest in the love of the Infinite One in working with this outer gift of speech with another. If there is a failure of direct communication, uh, for instance, between yourself and another entity, opening the heart involves not only speaking with that person to the full extent of one's capacity to communicate, but also forgiving the other self, yourself, and the situation which arose betwixt the two which did not partake of the open heart. The blockages of each lower chakra are fairly easy to pinpoint, since as the energy is blocked, there is also a feeling tone within one an uneasiness which speaks as loudly as any words and certainly far better than any rationalization of behavior or thinking. It does help in times of challenge to communication to look at the issues involved and to look within the self for what energies within the system are being baffled. The rational mind can be of good use when used as a tool of inquiry. The details of energy balance are informative and interesting. They do not, however, amount to half the weight of the intuition and spiritual forces that lie beneath or beyond uh, that entire level of speaking and words. Always look to the heart for its truth. Find the truth that love's energy brings, if we can, for when looked at with eyes of love, even the most difficult truth becomes possible to communicate. The world runs on words. Every grocery we buy, every call we make, 
Every meeting we attend is fueled by words upon words upon words. Communication is one outer gift we all perforce develop all of our lives. It can be a wonderful spiritual practice as well, as a shared outer gift to pledge the self to communicate ever more clearly. I wish us all good fortune with it. I hope I was clear on this issue. My brothers and sisters, hopefully I was clear as crystal in my communication that you are love and I love you.